Our first guest tonight is an Emmy and Golden Globe award-winning actress you know from her work on ER and The Good Wife. Her memoir, Sunshine Girl, An Unexpected Life, is out now. Please welcome back to the show and the studio, Juliana Margulies. Oh, Yay! Yay! Yeah, I know. We can do that, right? We're yeah, gonna get there now. We can. We're vaxxed. We're, We're vaxxed. vaxxed. But I have to sit over here, I think. Yeah, you gotta be in the middle of the couch. Hey. Welcome. Wow. It, what, what a delight to have you here. It's, it, I'm not your first in-studio guest. Ever. You're not our first in-studio guest, but I know you obviously have been doing a lot of press for this book. Have you been in-studio anywhere else? Um, I went in-studio, I was in L.A. shooting the morning show and the Kelly Clarkson show. That was the first um, um, in-person one. I, it was strange because they did have people in the seats, but they were on screens. Yeah, they and do like, uh, right. <laughs> so yeah. you could actually see faces, but they were not, uh, no. not on bodies. No, but most everything is from my house. All right. Which is kind of great too. Yeah. In that I'm not going to, you know, all the bookstores and the, you know, I'm trying to support all the independent bookstores. So I would be doing a tour. Of course that would take me to strange motel rooms and bad diners, so. I hope that those virtual book tours are still effective. I would like to think that people, uh, uh, you know, would log on to those Zooms and, and They're still get huge. engaged with you. You're getting Great. more people because anyone can log on. So it's not just in that area. Um, so it's actually, uh, we actually just, for the theater company I'm on the board for, do this miscast every year. And we've had more people being able to attend the last night and the year before because of virtual because That's everyone right. can buy a ticket. Did you, do you do Q and A's when you do your uh, virtual bookstore? Yeah. And how are, how, what percentage <laughs> of the questions are fully um, loony um, bird? Mo most of them are not about the book. <laughs> 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 Many of them are, are you ever gonna do a DR reunion? A lot of ER reunion um, questions, sure. Yeah, that kind of thing. You know, if someone fainted on an airplane, would you know what to do? <laughs> Um, so, like, medical questions. <laughs> People, a lot of medical well, questions. Well, yeah, because it's this strange ER resurgence. I think in quarantine, yeah. parents must have said to their kids, there's nothing else to watch. Yep. I grew up watching ER. Let's re, you know. Well, there's so many of those shows yeah. that I've, because it's sometimes daunting when you look at a show like ER that has so many seasons to start yeah. it again. Right. I Unless think, there's yeah. a pandemic when you've run out of everything. And right. you're like, what? It's kind of, be well, so. Um, we were in lockdown upstate, and my son at the time was 12, and the office became his yeah. religion. I mean, we had to do online questionnaires, who's most like Pam, who's most like Jim. Yep. Um, and I found out that most 12, 13, and 14-year-old boys, we watched all nine seasons of The Office. Now, has he <laughs> engaged with ER? My son, no. No interest? I tried. My, you did try, though. I said, you know, I used to be on a show that was pretty popular, um, and you might, you're old enough now to see it. And he was like, I'm good. <laughs> and I, uh, but he's been like that since he was three. I, I did, um, for him, Yeah. I did an episode of uh, Sesame Street where I play a doctor fixing Big Bird's wing. Very there well cast. Here's a photo yes. of you and Big Bird. There you go. And we set up the living room, and he came out in his diaper with his bottle. He had just turned three. And I said, look, Kieran, mama. And he went, nope. <laughs> Stood up and walked out of the room. <laughs> I, I recently uh, got to um, engage with some of the Muppets as well, and it was right before my kid's birthday. So oh. at the end, I uh, took a video with me, Elmo, and Cookie Monster, and my five-year-old uh, loved it, but then he said, next time, you don't have to be in the video. <laughs> Because you realize, like, it, it just takes yeah, him out of it. it takes him out of it. Yeah. And I think, I actually think it's really healthy. He, um, I mean, he came a couple of times to the set when I was doing The Good Wife, and he was more interested in sitting behind the camera and putting yeah. the headphones on and watching from the director's chair. He, he doesn't, he, he, I'm his mom. He, yeah. That's how he wants to see me, and I think that's fine. <laughs> right. <laughs> he won't be reading the book. Yeah. Well, I mean, I do think there is that funny thing of when you know what your mom does for a living and you know what she's capable of, you can't watch a show where you're like, she's not a nurse. Right. He, and he said that. He was like, it's just going to make me embarrassed, Mom, because I know that's not you. Yeah. And I was like, okay, I get it. That's, you yeah. You know, maybe when I'm dead and gone, he'll <laughs> be in his rocker and go, oh, that was my mother. You um, mentioned uh, 
The Morning Show, and I know uh, you can't uh, speak much to uh, the plot or uh, <laughs> yeah. who you play, but I would imagine, you know, this is a set where there are a lot of people who have worked on uh, long-running TV shows. Uh, I would assume they're all bringing what they've learned, and it's a pretty nice environment. It, it, it was a little slice of heaven for me. Yeah. I mean, I felt like I was on a vacation. Because to go from lockdown, you know, with your, your immediate family for eight months where you're cooking, cleaning, shopping, um, ironing, doing all of that stuff, to suddenly being on the set with these incredible actors. And also for me, I mean, it was kind of a joke because it was like, so on Tuesday, you're in one scene. <laughs> and I was like, I get a week to learn one scene. Because I'm so used to having to learn nine sure. pieces of dialogue a day. And, you know, I can't learn it until that night when I get the, the, the dialogue I know for that day out of my head. So it was one of those things where I was like, this is great. I, I mean, I was in heaven. It was really fun. And all I can say is um, that my character is a, uh, a, a news anchor, uh -huh. journalist, very successful in her world. Um, she's, she has a one-hour news program once a week at night. And... Um, and that's all apparently that's, I can say. That's uh, like meaningless what you it's just gave It's meaningless. Us. I know. <laughs> you. I'm sorry. They actually Apple sent out a whole thing of of my answers, and I realized I had spoken to a few newspapers beforehand, and and said some things. Oh, that you weren't allowed to that say. That apparently did, I wasn't supposed police? to say. Uh, so I'm. <laughs> okay, gotcha. I'm trying to be good now. Um, I here, here's something I found out from the book that I yes. cannot believe I did not know, that you uh, lived in New Hampshire. I, I feel like I have a pretty good grasp of other people uh, who've lived in New Hampshire as someone who also lived in New Hampshire. Uh, I did <laughs> not know only this about you. Ones. There's just like, there's not that many. I know. Did you have yeah. good, uh, were your experiences in New Hampshire positive ones? So, yes, some of them, most of them. Um, but I got there in eighth grade and I had come straight from living in England mm -hmm. where it just, I was always... <sighs> trying to figure out who I was supposed to be now. Yeah. Because everything was different. And when I got there, it was, you know, like I, I showed up and what I had been, you know, thinking was so chic and awesome, which were these big red kicker shoes. They were called kicker and FU's jeans. And I showed up into my classroom and they're all in Timberland boots and flannel shirts. <laughs> and I remember one kid saw my outfit and was like, geez, I'm crow. <laughs> and I didn't know what that was. Like, was that a good thing, right. a bad thing? <laughs> Um, turns out it means Jesus Christ. Yep. Jesus Crow. Um, so when I, I ran home, um, we were living in my gym teacher's house. Long story, read the book. But um, <laughs> I, he lived on campus. And I, I ran home to change because I was at lunchtime because I was so embarrassed. And I came back for Latin. And my Latin teacher, I hadn't met her yet. Her name was Mrs. Lombardi which really translate to Mrs. Lombardi. Yeah, we had, a, we had a Mrs. Lombardi in my school, too. Did you? Yep. <laughs> I walked in, and she said, you tatty. And I, I had a slight British accent, so I said, I'm, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I, what does that mean? <laughs> and she thought I was being cheeky, you know, by, by not knowing what you tatty means. <laughs> and so it went back and forth, T-A-I-D-Y. <laughs> and I was like, I'm tatty, I'm tatty. And finally, a kid was like, you're late. You're tardy. I was like, oh my god, thank you. I felt like I moved from London and moved to a different country speaking a different language. Yeah. No, it turns out, uh, new, do not mistake New England for England. No, no. my, my mom ha hired a, um, a handyman to help us. It was my mom and me and my sister. And we, when we finally moved into our house, I just wanted to hang up my like curtains and bookshelves and have a room of my own. And, and he kept, I wanted to help him, and he kept saying, just pat it on the Mac. And I was like, I will. What does that mean? <laughs> pat it on the Mac. Put it on the mark <laughs> is what it means. I would just, I was like, oh, my God, I'm never going to win. <laughs> so it was, um, yeah, that's New Hampshire. Why don't you have a New Hampshire accent? I, you know, I grew up, I was in Michigan first, and then by the time I got there, it was a little late to break. It took me a while. I had some, like, I certainly said wicked oh, a, a great yeah. amount. Um, and that I sort of uh, slowly combed out. But it's hard because my mom, is classy. My mom still says it uh, a great. Because my mom was then a school teacher. And so, like, she just was constantly around, like, whatever slang uh, right. the New Hampshire kids of the day used. So but you she, never said Jesus Crow. I never said Jesus Crow. Yeah. But I will say, based on the outfit you described, if I'd seen that, I would have said it. I mean, 
I mean, cut to, you know, six months later, I too, well, I never went the Timberland boot thing, but I had the L.L. Bean boots on yeah. and carpenter pants. Like, that's as far as I would go. I think I had a couple flannel shirts. Yeah. But well, it took we, me six we do months. appreciate <laughs> that you at least uh, went that far. Yeah, I did. And um, then I loved it. I actually loved my high school years there. It's a, it's a really, uh, it's, a, it's a great place. Yeah. And we'd ski. They shut down schools on Wednesday, and we all went skiing because there was too much snow. Yeah. I so. mean, that, uh, the amount of snow days I had growing up. Yeah, it was great. I, I mean, I wonder with climate change if there are as many, but I felt well, like... Haven't you heard the latest? My son is furious. What's There's up? There's no more snow days because of Zoom. Oh, yeah. Now all kids can go on Zoom and they don't need to right. miss school. There would need to be like a citywide blackout. That's right. Yeah, that's yeah. the new snow day. <laughs> Technical glitch. Yeah. Hey, um, thank you for being here. Thank you for being here in studio. It's Thanks. always such I, a I, delight to see you. A pleasure. Thanks for having me. Sunshine Girl is available now wherever books are sold, but please support your local and independent bookstores. We'll be right back.